Hello. I am here to honor Javier Zamora, an Iraq veteran. A gorgeous face. Look at that face. My name is Jennifer Zamora, and I am an amputee. I have all my limbs, all my legs, all my digits. They're all here. But my loss was caused by a distracted driver, the use of a cell phone, and the collision and consequences of these life choices on a two-lane highway. I have lost no part of my physical being. What I have lost, although my kids may say I've lost my mind, I have lost my other self. I have lost my partner in life, in love, in family. And just like someone who has lost a limb, I have those phantom pains, those phantom feelings. When the wind whispers in my ear, that I have to continue being a single parent to four teenagers now. When my name is called in the middle of the night as I sleep to wake up and continue to go on for another day. And when I fall in love again and something deep in my soul says, it's okay. Those are my phantom realities. That is my loss. And I speak before you about this very personal loss as my rehabilitation, as my commitment to this and similar events, my way of honoring him and hoping that it can prevent someone else from experiencing this same event. I'm not going to stand before you and show you all these images of Javier and tell you what a great person he was. Those of us that were fortunate enough to have him in our lives knew what an amazing man he was and what an amazing person he could have been. He came home from a very dangerous tour overseas, and we had 10 glorious months to celebrate his commitment to his country and to us as a family. I don't have statistics. I don't do numbers. There are expert panel here that can give you all of that. What I'm here as an expert in is loss and the aftermath and consequences when you choose to talk and text or smoke or do whatever it is instead of controlling a 4,000 piece of equipment that requires two feet, two hands, and your complete attention. What I'm here to show you is what's left. That's, that's what I have left of him to show to you. That's what I'm left with. And the memories that we don't get to share with him now. These photos do not capture Javier in his life. They capture a life that he is missing. Moments we will never get to share with him. First dates, first cars, proms, graduations, boot camps, weddings, birthdays, grandbabies. Each of these moments that bring a smile to our face singularly are always tainted with a sorrow to a family whose loved one was stolen by a careless and preventable tragedy. A future happiness tarnished by the guilt that I actually get to go on and live and, and, and find happiness with someone else, but that guilt that it's without him. April is not a month where we raise awareness about some illness or disease and hope for a cure. We have the cure. The cure is right before us. And it's not followed by two minutes of these are the side effects. It's readily available and awaiting distribution to the masses. And all we're asking is that our government, our citizens, locally, nationally, globally, enact the cure and distribute it to allow us to grow old with our fathers, sons, daughters, sisters, mothers. It's there at our taking. I can only speak to you of what I am familiar with and that is loss and the pre preventable loss of someone in my life that has caused a paradox that to this day leaves me conflicted. 
I don't know how many of you have teenage drivers, but I have three. My son has a cell phone. He's my newest driver. He's got a car, his first car. He's got a girlfriend, which doesn't really play into the story, but that causes my own anxiety. <laughs> I come home late from work one night. His car's not in the driveway. I go upstairs. He's not in his bed. I start calling. No answer. I start texting. A reasonable amount of time, I wait for him to respond. Five minutes, that's my limit. No response. I finally send him a text message and a voicemail that says, if you do not call me or text me in the next five minutes, I'm calling your, the police, your, your car is stolen, and you've been kidnapped. <laughs> and he walks in the door two minutes later, and he gives me a big old bear hug, and he says, Mom, I don't answer my phone when I'm driving. Well, doesn't this advocate feel like an idiot? <laughs> we have programmed our children that they must answer us. We want to know where they are. We want to know that they're safe. And in doing so, we have then just put their life in danger and caused the one thing that we are sure that has already caused, happened, and, and occurred. We have to reprogram our lives. We have to reprogram how we operate, how we do business, how we parent. We have to change who we are to accommodate the emotional loss of what we've already experienced in this room and make sure that it never happens again. It is such a preventable loss. My father died of cancer. I watched his body shrivel into 90 pounds and watched him take his last breath. There was no cure. I got to say goodbye to my dad. It was New Year's Day, 12.02 in the morning. He waited for the fireworks. He did. I never got to say goodbye to Javier. He was in California serving his last few years in the service and my job transferred me to Texas. My mom got the call. My mom said they're putting him on the helicopter. Now Javier was a door gunner in Iraq. He knew the flying. He knew that feeling, that sensation, that awesome power of the, of the blades whipping above your head. They put him on that helicopter to transport him to a trauma center. And as soon as they took off, he left us. That was his flight home. I never got to say goodbye to him, though. And this disease has a cure. Do not let this cure sit there and go to waste. Do not lose another person. Thank you.